Why not? Rocket. Hello, all. Welcome to the dark room. I am Paul Mosihanton, the dude in the dark room, and it is Thursday, October 27th. It's 8 p.m. here uh, on the west coast of the United States. And uh, since it's Thursday, that makes it a Triforce Thursday here in the dark room. So we're going to be doing some Zelda Breath of the Wild photography. Uh, and then we're obviously sticking in the spirit of things seasonally uh, and photographing some cool Halloween time type spooky snaps. Uh, as as you've all guessed already, yes, I'm dressed as Marty McFly from uh, Back to the Future. This is my little Halloween outfit. Okay, very proud of it. I've never worn suspenders before, and they're very uncomfortable. I'm not into it. I'm really not into these. But I do like doing that. That's really the only benefit of having these on is like one of those. Uh, other than that, though, they're uncomfortable. I don't like them. Kind of pretentious, if you ask me a little bit. You know what I mean? Some people pull it off real good. I had a buddy couple buddies that were in a band and they would wear suspenders and they look great dude i just don't think i really pull it off but you know what marty mcfly wears them so i gotta wear them uh me and my girlfriend doing mcfly and his girlfriend couple's costume so that should be pretty fun uh unfortunately the only the only event that we had to go to this weekend was canceled so uh it's like what am i gonna do with the costume now well, i was gonna i was gonna wear it on the stream anyway so we got that going I've, I've i've at least had that value out getting that value out of it um and then who the who the hell else knows you know scaring i'm not gonna scare a little kids some little kids not gonna handing out candy a little kid you're not gonna know who i am these kids aren't gonna know who i am I'll tell you this about this costume not the ideal california costume because it's layered he got four layers if you're if you're maximizing uh the potential of uh, or the full potential of the costume uh it's a four layered costume i have a red undershirt which got me confused at target for an employee the other day because i was wearing this undershirt and this shirt to make sure it was matching with the pants that i was looking for um two layers already then he has a jean jacket on and then on top of that, he has a the big orange vest, the life preserver, as uh, uh, the judgmental town folk call it once he goes back in time. Um, and it's like so freaking hot. I said I was going to be, I was like, I'm gonna, not going to need the fan tonight because I'm, I'm layering up. Or I mean, because it's cold. And then it's like, no, actually, it's going to be really hot because you have a bunch of freaking layers on. And then I still got to put on the earmuffs. Still got to put on the earmuffs. Um, anyway, uh, so we are getting in the Halloween spirit. Uh, we've been doing spooky type stuff photography in uh, Zelda for the past few weeks. Uh, and we're going to continue doing that. Just photographing, uh, you know, skeletal type em uh, enemies, which they uh, designate as stall, S-T-A-L, stall type enemies in the uh, Zelda universe. Uh, we're going to be photographing some creepy locations. Uh, I was kind of hoping we'd go to like maybe somewhere we can get some lightning and some get some lightning strikes going on. I think that's kind of uh, that might be hard to come by. I think if we head into a certain area, we can we can have better chances of some lightning storms. So maybe we'll play around with that. Play around with maybe photographing some more of those great skeletons uh, that we uh, that we know and love so well. And uh, we're gonna have a good time doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, if you want to watch any of the previous streams. Uh, everything ends up on YouTube eventually. I didn't put up last week's stream yet because I forgot to edit it. I like to cut out that, you know, 30 minute intro of nothingness, uh, as we're waiting for the stream to start. So I forgot to cut that out and now I'm waiting for it to process before I actually upload it or have it uh, go live rather go uh, public. Um, so, uh, you can't see last week's necessarily, but you can watch pretty much all the streams on there. Uh, also, every time we're doing one of these streams, uh, we are working on a nice video detailing the photography in this game, what we like about it, what we've been doing with it, what we would change about it, um, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and that will end up being detailed uh, and uploaded to YouTube eventually. So uh, if you want to follow along with that 
that uh, content, uh, check out the YouTube as well. Also, nice little short little clips uh, from each stream on there. If you don't really, if you're not a long long haul type uh, stream watcher, you can watch just nice little bite sized clips of the best shots that we get on each stream. Um, and uh, that also can be found on TikTok. Those little short clips can also be found uh, on the TikTok. Which is uh, going to be the same thing that's on YouTube. So you're not going to, you're, you're not really going to get different content on there, one versus the other. In my opinion, you might as well just go to YouTube. But I know TikTok's the hot new product out there. So uh, obviously, if you prefer uh, watching short form stuff on TikTok, check that out. Although they're slowly up, upping the amount of time that you can, uh, you can upload video or the longest length you can upload to TikTok. So it's like eventually, it's just going to be another YouTube. I'm very curious, actually, if, if YouTube and TikTok will kind of be competing at some point. Because TikTok is already doing live streaming. Just like YouTube's jumping into the live stream game, right? Uh, and then they're just going to slowly allow you to upload more and more more and more and uh, longer length clips and content. And there'll be absolutely no difference. Um, but either way, your, your preference, your choice, you, you check out those if you're interested, obviously. Uh, also, we have a pretty cool group of people on our Discord. Um, I always encourage, uh, while, while you are viewing the stream, definitely put in a game that you love, find out if there's any, any cool photographic capabilities in that game and shoot some cool photos and then, uh, share them on the discord. If you so desire, if you'd like to, uh, uh, show off your photographic exploits in your game of choice, we've got a good group of people that would love to see what you got. Um, and I, I thank all my friends on there uh, for all uh, the support and, and uh, all you guys have been doing on there. Hope it's been hope it's been exciting. I will always say that I'm very bad with I'm very bad with keeping up with pretty much everything related to social media in general. Um, so just forgive me if I don't see something immediately or, or it takes me a minute to reply to things or whatever. Uh, believe me, I mean no disrespect. It is like a complete it is a complete lack of uh, my own. Uh, I don't want to say motivation. Uh, I mean, I guess it's maybe motivation. It's more of an anxiety thing, in all honesty. I think checking social media and like doing stuff with social media, I'm held back uh, more by anxiety than anything else. I want to say I just stress out about how I'm phrasing something or like possibly getting canceled because I accidentally said something the wrong way and then someone took it the wrong way and no one's gonna give me a second chance. So uh, there's a lot of anxiety to do with all that kind of stuff. I'm a good dude though. Okay, I'm. I'm I think I'm an okay dude. All right, so uh, believe me, nothing I'm ever doing is is uh, nefarious in any way. I promise. Um, although maybe we'll do some like nefarious type photography during our spooky season stuff in the game, just not in real life. Um, other than that, though, let's just jump in. I am really, I'm actually really, really low energy. I know it probably sounds surprising because I probably seem okay, uh, but I had my flu shot and my booster shot earlier this week. And it, it like I don't know which one wrecked me, but I got I got them both the exact same day. Maybe that was a bad idea. Um, I wasn't really had didn't have too much going on earlier this week, so it was a, it was a good week to do it. And we're getting into holiday season, where we're going to be seeing a lot of family and visiting with people, and I want to be safe and protected, obviously. Um, but I got both my shots, and I'm like, first of all, I'm already I already feel winded, but uh, I'm just super low energy and tired, so I might do a shorter ish stream. Although I say that, and then I probably will end up being on here for pretty much the same amount of time. Because uh, once you get started, it's so much fun. I do have a lot of fun shooting these photos. I hope you all enjoy watch it, watching uh, these photos being taken. I hope you enjoy the process going down. Also, I think my camera's off slightly. It's supposed to be. You know, I probably did have zoomed out a little bit. I should go in. <whistles> Extreme close-up. Whoa! Whoa! I've been wanting to do that, and we haven't had a chance yet, and now is a good opportunity, but I'm supposed to be, I like it how I want this riding the edge of the frame, this is the control, uh, height control uh, for the enlarger, I like that riding the one edge of the frame, um, and then I like this shelf closed off on this side all the way up to, basically it's just so this little camera down here is in completely in the frame but then that whole front side of the uh front side of the uh shelf is actually not visible 
um, and they can get bumped really easily. And I'm really glad I have this geared tripod head on here that gives me very minute adjustments to pretty much all of the axis of movement. Uh, I've been meaning to talk about tripods that I'm shooting with and all that. Actually, you might have seen if you watched any of the previous uh, photo shoots that we did last year. I haven't done any this year yet, and I know we're getting close to the end of the year, but um, if you if you watched any of those photo shoots that we did, you would you would have seen the the tripod head that I'm using now as my streaming cam uh, support. Uh, but I've it's some a head I've been meaning to talk about. I want want to do a, like a little review on that thing. I'm a huge fan of geared tripod heads. First of all, I think tripod heads are like one of the more important uh, things to own if you shoot if you shoot on sticks. If you're a stick based shooter, you like composing your shots, uh, taking time. Uh, you're not in a rush, you know, photojournalists, obviously you're not going to care much about tripod heads, uh, as much as like a good landscape, uh, heavy landscape photographer or, uh, fine art photographer, architectural photographer like myself, uh, where the tripod head can make a very big difference, uh, in the ergonomics, uh, and usability while you're shooting. So, um, I have a lot to say about these things. Actually, I do intend, I very much would like to design my own tripod head. It's something I, we talked about on the stream a while ago. And I've not really advanced any further in making that happen yet because we stopped doing the photo shoots. We did like the first year of photo shoots. Uh, and then that gave me some time or I wanted some time to evaluate how I was able to shoot in here and what I wanted to change about the space um, to shoot uh, in a higher quality fashion. Um, but we're still a long way off and I still got a lot of work to do. Um, so I should probably just get back on shooting what we can while I'm still waiting. But uh, thanks for being patient. If, if those were your, like the main draw, which I don't think, uh, I don't really get too many people talking about those. So I don't know how many people really care. Uh, but I love doing it. So we're going to continue doing those at some point. Um, either way, I think we're way, we got to, we got to get into this thing. So let's, let's just jump in. We got to do a review and you know, that's going to take 30 minutes. Um, so let's just get in there. Let's get in there and give it 110%. Okay. Eh. I'm gonna try to throw out back to the future one liners if I can if I can remember any of them. I'm just gonna say that's heavy a lot, because that's that's like McFly's catchphrase. If he had one, it'd be something like that's heavy or something about heaviness. And then Doc Brown saying that this, what's this you said you, you hear that's that word again, heavy. Is there a gravitational issue in the future? Um, anyway. Anyway, yeah. See, I'm already sweating, man. Three layers and suspenders will really do it to you, unfortunately. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, so we're still in the Gerudo Desert, which uh, we might stay here for a little bit. Um, maybe we'll go try to, uh, photograph that great skeleton one more time. I think we got one cool shot of it. Um, I wanted to evaluate how the, uh, setting moon looks on the opposite side of it. We got the moon rising up, uh, which we'll look at that photo in just a moment. Um, but I would love to see it going down on the other side here with those be these beautiful silhouetted hills in the background. And a little bit more of the desert landscape. I love this area of the game. I've always loved desert areas in games. IRL, I freaking love the desert quite a bit. Um, it's clean, you know? As Howard Hughes would put it. Uh, so I kind of want to stick around here. Although there's really not that much spooky stuff here. I mean, like, let's see. What did we say we wanted to do? What was our agenda? that we kind of had a couple points of interest to hit. The Great Skeleton, which we got one shot. Um, and then maybe we'll go check out, uh, again, the other side here, shooting from the east side of the skeleton towards the setting moon in the west. Uh, looking over, just looking over the dunes here. We should go check out this shrine. Is there anything cool around this shrine? Also feel like... Anytime I see a big gap in a Korok area, is it, or no Koroks, it's like there's got to be a Korok somewhere between, like, here, because I don't see any. Uh, but that's not the point of the stream. This isn't to collect all the Korok streams, dude. This, isn't, this is not what we're doing. 
Um, either way, we're going to shoot. We'll go check that sunset out or the sunrise uh, or I'm, the moon set uh, from this other side of the skeleton. Then I wanted to go check out Lomai Labyrinth. I tried to get a good shot of this last year, I want to say, and it did not really work out. I didn't feel like we knew how to frame it right, and it just didn't really come out well. Um, so we'll, we'll evaluate that little spot. Probably go up to like Mount Grenage right here and just hop on down. I'm going to guess that maybe this shelf right here, this like uh, this little Korok spot is my this might be a good view because it looks like that's looking right through the canyon here um although this is also within this giant uh look it's almost like a crater i don't think technically this is a crater but the south low my labyrinth here is kind of situated inside this little valley crater uh and I, it's it's not going to be easy to photograph any kind of landscape around it. We're going to have to just deal with those hills. And if it looks like total garbage, I'm not going to spend too much time doing it because why waste the time? Uh, and then we'll see how far that gets us because then we'll go from there. I think I think that'll kind of that'll kind of give me everything I would would have wanted in the Gerudo desert area, or at least the few things I had in mind. Um, and then maybe we'll try to go off and, and, and get something else. Like I would love to go back to Hyrule Castle area uh, and try to get some of those uh, Guardian Stalker shots in uh, the Hyrule Town Ruins area here, which can come out real cool. One of my favorite shots I've taken so far, I believe it was this broken wall right here. Pretty sure it's this one because the gatehouse is in the background. Um, I got this sweet shot of this broken wall with a Guardian Stalker right here looking through, and you can just see... Um, Hyrule Castle, uh, sitting through this little broken wall, uh, and the Guardian Stalker about to blast me uh, on this side. So I'd like to go back, maybe mess around with that. Maybe we'll go, we'll go check out the town, pr Castle Town Prison, dude. That's what we should do. And again, if you know of any freaking cemeteries in this game hit me up and let me know because i really would love to go to a cemetery and i cannot if there is one i really cannot think of where it is and i swear i looked it up and it didn't look like there were any um and then my excuse for that was nintendo was getting shit for having uh fun adventures uh that your character has in the game pushing gravestones and maybe they were getting too much shit because little kids were emulating that. Disturbing the dead and all. Uh, and so maybe they took it out. Because they're like, let's just X that, nix that content. You know, nix the grave robbing type content for a minute. Tobio's Hollow. That I mean, Hollows just sound, obviously, very Halloween for obvious reasons. Uh, I think we did check this spot out at one point, too. But yeah, I can't think of where, if there are... If there are uh, any kind of gravestone cemetery areas, I just I they're not major areas. If I if anything, I I guess they would be maybe a small. Um, they might be a very small portion of one of these major towns or villages in the game. But I again, I cannot really remember any. Which is also just kind of a plot hole. It's like, where are they burying them? Maybe they, just, they don't. Maybe they don't bury people. You know, maybe they. Maybe uh, real estate is you know is just a little bit too expensive in Hyrule, and so they don't want to waste any of the space uh, with people that uh, aren't going to care anymore because they they passed Makar Island. I always I do. I swear I was like, this has got to be a Korok spot, and maybe it is. I swear I checked that thing pretty in depth, and I didn't see anything, but. Uh, anyway, this is not the worst area either. Uh, the greater Korok forest area could be cool as well as the Typhlo ruins. That could be pretty creepy. Uh, but it's like how, how much time are we going to, I should, I really should. I think I started doing the spooky stuff a little late, a little late in the game. Um, but it's not like we can't go to those areas outside of spooky season. It's just. It's nice to have those on reserve 
when we want to go photograph this type of stuff. So um, anyway, getting our bearings here. Um, so like I said, we were shooting in uh, the Gerudo Desert quite extensively last time. Uh, let's see where we started. Where did we start? Let's just go chronologically here. Uh, oh, we do have to go find some more Kilton uh, areas. I think we could go do like one Kilton from one of the other spots that we can find them. Um, this shot of this Talus is pretty cool, but this is actually, I'm probably going to delete this one soon, especially because it doesn't fit the, it just doesn't fit the prototype, you know, the spooky prototype now that we're in, in, in depth into, uh, our, our spooky imagery. I'm never getting rid of this shot, dude. I'm never getting rid of this shooting star, unless we get a much better shot, um, of a shooting star of a Hyrule Castle. What sucks is I actually, I think I compositionally would have preferred to have tilted down a tiny bit, but that's how the first shot we got was. And we had, unfortunately, this the giant tree stump uh, that we posted up on. And that was just right in the bottom of the frame in our first shot. So I pushed in, or I think actually I just tilted up. I don't think I pushed in at all. I just tilted up a little bit to cut that from the bottom of the frame. Um, but then that also, I just don't like, I would have preferred to have seen basically the entire area below all that red uh, Ganon glowing gook, gobbledygook stuff um, that he's got surrounding the castle or whatever. So like tilting down and having that whole area hold in the frame, I just don't like, it just feels like uh, I'm missing a little bit of the bottom of, of the castle area. And there's really nothing happening in that entire like, five to ten percent of the top of the frame um and but i wouldn't have wanted the moon to go too much higher towards the top of the frame either so i don't know 2020 hindsight such a limited amount of time um man i wish the moon was in focus here it's kind of a bummer in this silhouette shot that the moon got out of focus anyway these are from last these are from two weeks ago i should probably delete one of these at some point but for now since they're so spooky i guess we got to keep them um, so anyway, this is where we started last time. We knew we wanted to get a good Kilton shot at this location in the desert. Uh, so we showed up, scouted it out, you know. Uh, this was actually, this was during the time when I knew I just wanted to see where the moon was going to end up falling. And it did fall in this pretty sweet little spot in the background above that uh, uh, pyramid-shaped hill. Um, and so I was pretty stoked that we got this, even though it feels like maybe a little tight. I wish there, I, I could have widened out, but there was so much, uh, junk going on with those little, those little pillars next to the cart that I couldn't really get wide without kind of, uh, feeding all this other stuff into the frame that I wouldn't want. So, um, but we got that one. And that one was cool, but, uh, I also do not prefer a half moon, uh, type uh, phase doesn't doesn't really look the coolest to me. I always prefer either a, a full or crescent moon in the image. Um, and then we ended up going back and getting that crescent image, but we'll do a comparison, make sure we choose the right one. Um, I would have, again, I probably would have preferred a full moon there, but that's fine. Um, and then we went over to the uh, Great Skellington, the Gerudo Great Skellington. I uh, got this little flying V just flying over its uh, over its skull towards uh, towards that divine beast within its jaws. Uh, I love these great skeletons; they look really cool. And I think it would be rad if you, there were the, like an actual creature that you could fight that large. I guess is that can is that a Maldugo? A Maldugo? Maldugo? Like a giant Maldugo? I'm not sure. Not the best shot, though. Sunrise and sunset shots are not going to really fit the vibe that I want to go for. That's why I'm, I'm going to try to adhere to, unless we're scouting around, I'm going to try to adhere to night shooting only. Uh, so we'll delete that one. Uh, and then we went and got the actual shot that we had, that we had envisioned, which was a uh, little moon rising uh, just, just above or around the skeleton uh, and here we got it just within its jaws, which looks really cool. I think that looks really freaking rad. 
Um, wish there was something happening in that top left quadrant. It's like there's those really interesting clouds just coming over the hill in the middle portion of the frame. Um, but more big, nice, interesting looking clouds like that could have filled in that void in that top left quadrant. Also not really all that excited about the bottom left quadrant either because it's just those sand dunes. Uh, but those aren't really repetitious enough in the rest of the image to really feel that good to me. Um, I would have preferred here a nice view of the entire desert, which is, again, why we're going to go back, shoot something like this from the opposite side, and see if we can get that moon uh, rising, or in that case, it would be setting, the moon setting on the opposite side of this great skeleton uh, with a beautiful desert landscape around it rather than uh, here. It's just because we, we're facing a slight uphill on that sand dune and then it, that's just ending in very distant silhouette of those hills uh, and that divine beast um, it just doesn't feel very desert landscape-ish to me so i think we can get a better interesting image but i'm gonna keep that one we shot it a couple times this one i think came out the best the moon is the most bright and brilliant looking uh, i think that position uh, is very is very nice within that jaw the jaws of that skeleton um, here it lost a little bit of that splendorous glow uh, that we had in this shot. So we can delete that one for sure. And then we got one of it just above. But here it's very obscured by those clouds, losing almost the entirety of the crescent shape. That doesn't look like anything. You know, it doesn't even look like the moon. To me, at least. Uh, so we can delete that one. And then we just keep the one, the, the successful shot. Uh, and then we went back, got that same exact Kilton shot, uh, but we got this at crescent moon phase rather than half moon phase. Interesting. It's, uh, I mean, obviously, they probably were like, no one's going to notice, but people like us notice these kind of things, and that is that the, the, the phase of the moon doesn't really change the overall brightness um, of the nightscapes. You know what I mean? Like, this is half moon. It's the same intensity as a crescent moon where it's like, obviously it'd be a very dim light from a smaller moon or a non-existent moon, which is what we had. I think the last night that we had shot through, um, which I believe we've, I've mentioned that it feels like sometimes the moon Sprite, it just doesn't exist. Uh, and the sun Sprite, I swear the sun Sprite doesn't exist. Although I guess maybe in this game, I'm not hundred percent sure that definitely happens in fallout where the moon and the sun Sprites just won't be there in the sky. Um, sometimes like the lighting effect will still be there, but the actual, the actual moon and the sun is just not there. Um, and the excuse I've kind of came up with for this game, at least is that once it gets to zero phase of the moon, which I'm sure there's a very specific name for that, um, after it's, 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 it's smallest slivered form, um, after it has waned to nothingness, uh, I think that. I think it's just supposed to be no moon in this game. I, I'm not sure because I've never, I never read about, and I didn't look this up before I jumped on, but uh, I think that is, that might be what it's supposed to be. It's just a moonless night because we're at um, the darkest phase of the moon. Um, because that's what that would have been. I'm pretty sure the night that I, I was complaining about the moon not showing up, it had just been after the, the smallest phase the thinnest phase of the moon. Uh, so that explains that away. Uh, and then I think I do like this second shot a little bit better in terms of a Kilton portrait. Um, this first one, we do have some of his breath coming out of his mouth, which I did think that might be a cool element to add. Uh, you know, it gives you a sense of the temperature and the environment that we are photographing in, but uh, it obscures the face in, in a way. And because it doesn't, it really does not look like a breath puff coming out of his mouth. I think it's better to not have it at all, uh, which we have it a tiny bit here. Also, I'm kind of at an extremely far uh, left side, or I'm a little too far to the left side of Kilton's uh, little balloon here, and we're seeing we're seeing that left face of it a little bit too much. And then I made a correction to the composition, moved my position uh, to the right a little bit more 
uh, to bring both Kilton and the moon just slightly closer to the center of the frame together rather than being far spread out from the le top left to that bottom right corner. I just wanted to bring them a little bit closer together. So we did that. Um, and then also that crescent moon is my preferred uh, phase to photograph. Uh, and I also had changed the lighting a little bit. We had mi moved our, our uh, salt man trick uh, bundle of sticks on fire, fire pit uh, to the opposite side. It didn't really change the lighting that much, I guess. I mean, here he has like a little bit of light coming from the bottom right, I guess. And then here it's mostly coming from the left. Um, either way, I, honestly, I'm not particular about either of those those lighting effects. Uh, but you know what? I Just because I like the phase of the moon better here, also the composition changed enough for me to enjoy it better. Plus, I closed off that bottom corner where you can see below his little table and we're seeing some of his legs, uh, but not enough to really feel like uh, it was meant to be part of the image, which it definitely wasn't because I can't see that bottom part of the frame while I'm actually shooting. Uh, and then here we actually closed that section off so that allows for a cleaner view of just his bust uh, inside his little his little uh, balloon thing, balloon home workshop uh, business storefront ish thing he's got. Uh, so let's delete this one. That one's good. Keep that one. Keep that kill. We got our obligatory self portrait. It's like eh, nothing to even say about that. Let's just move on. Uh, and then we tried to get some good photos of uh, treasure chest being guarded by some uh, Stella's Alphos. I don't think any of these really, I mean, well, it looks like we only got that one of the actual treasure chest being guarded. So maybe we'll do some more of that if we got time. Also, it was like I only had uh, the stall enemies pop out like once or twice. It was kind of, they were not spawning. They weren't popping up as much as I thought they were going to, so. Uh, only had like one opportunity to shoot with them. Uh, and this isn't the, this isn't the best. I wish that big, I wish that giant skeleton in the background was a little bit more visible. Uh, have that as, as an element. It's cool. It's just that spine, I guess, but it's also kind of hard to tell, uh, what size, uh, everything is in relation to each other here. Also very, very, very little detail in the sky. Not happy about that. Um, probably should it, I guess I would have tilted down a little bit maybe cause I wouldn't have minded the, the lines in the sand kind of creating cool pattern all the way across the bottom of the image leading up to the chest and the, uh, Stalizalfos guarding it. Um, but I did like the way that the, uh, there's a little puff of, uh, dust to puff of sand atmospheres coming up right behind the treasure chest that kind of added a little bit of a, of a, not a silhouette, or made the chest into more of a silhouette uh, in front of, made it stand out a little more than it would have uh, in front of just the desert texture uh, and shade behind it. Uh, same thing happened with, with the Los Alfos, still, still Los Alfos. Got a little plume coming from, from uh, over those dunes on the right side behind him. Uh, and that looked really cool. I love love those atmospheric conditions. I always try to add as much of that as possible to the frame where applicable and appropriate. Uh, so this is okay. But no, let's just delete. It's just something that really, I think I've said this before about these same type of images because I do love crafting or trying to capture uh, these chests, the treasure chest images and the entire point and the storyline we're trying to build is that this enemy is actually defending the chest. They're protecting the treasure chest. And it doesn't really feel like that if uh, the enemy isn't like closer to the chest itself and then at least looking somewhat imposing. Here it looks like maybe he was excited about the chest and he's like, oh, what's that? It's a treasure chest over there. Let me walk over. Like, he looks like he's casually walking over to it. He doesn't have an imposing pose. In posing pose. Uh, uh, he doesn't look dominating in any way. He doesn't look dangerous in any way. So I think this is kind of a failure in terms of what we want it to look like. So let's just delete it then, Paulino boy. Um, this one was almost cool. I think I kept it because I thought it was interesting how... Uh, 
the the great skeleton in the background is almost flowing from the Stelizalfos in the foreground here. That that spine is coming out of the Stelizalfos, and it almost looks like it's part of his body. Not quite. Like I think the the uh, the vertebrae. Maybe the one that's closest to the Stelazalfos' back. I think I, I should have like closed it up, but I didn't think of, I wasn't looking at this image when I was shooting it. Uh, I didn't look at it like that, so I wasn't trying to emphasize that appearance. Uh, but that was interesting. Other than that, though, I mean, like, what is with the composition here is terrible. I mean, I, this is definitely a square composition, if I've ever seen one, or a, a suitable crop into a square composition. Um, cause everything, pretty much the entire 30% of the left side of the frame, nothing entire right side, 10% of the right side of the frame, absolutely nothing. Um, and so we could crop that out. It'd strengthen the composition and it would, uh, uh, look a lot better. Uh, so let's delete that one. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't need it. Um, this one's okay. Love the way the background looks. This is just before sunrise or as the sun was just about to come up. Over the hills there. Uh, and it's like, oh, this is an okay shot. I don't know how much I want to talk about this. But I, one thing I will say is that these the any kind of archer-type enemy, bow-wielding enemy, uh, they, they just don't look like they're holding a bow and arrow to me. Like, I think we got to be... You got to be a lot closer to really recognize what they're holding and what they're doing. Because here, I don't... I mean, this could be a motherfucking lollipop kid, you know, from the lollipop guild, like throwing a little lollipop behind his back for all I fucking know. I don't know what he's holding. It's hard, hard to tell what he's looking at or holding. Uh, they love that green glow from his eyes, though. That's really cool. I love those glow. This is why these these are very suitable spooky type characters um, to shoot. And this is why we try to get them as much as we can in, in, in our photos, get these Stelizfos... Any of the stall type enemies. Um, but no, I don't think that's the best. I, I also, the green of his, the, the glow from his eyes is, uh, is matching or at least, uh, working in, 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 uh, uh, context with the other color in the frame. Like they all, the color in this image is very, is very nice. It all, it all works pretty well together, except for maybe those pink flowers. Those are a little out of place, but. Eh, goodbye on that one. We don't need that one. I love this leaping shot. That is a great pose on that on that Stalaz Alphos on the far right side of the frame. Uh, also, I had realized that the shadows from these type of enemies look great because they have such limited uh, amount of structural integrity to their body uh, so that like the, the skeleton actually stands out really well as a shadow. Um. And this is that is a great pose, but I wish I saw more of that shadow in the foreground. That was one one thing that I would have loved if the sun had been coming more from the right side of the frame, casting that shadow kind of diagonally or almost completely uh, parallel with the bottom of the frame across the sand on that bottom left corner. Uh, that could have been really cool. Those other still as alphos in the background are a little bit too small to really tell what's going on. And there's not much detail in the sky because it's getting heavily blown out. Uh, so we can delete that one. That leap is great, though. Uh, same still as Alphos posing in front of Gerudo Town. I do really love Gerudo Town. We're going to go back and shoot. That's another good summertime type uh, subject. The oases of Gerudo Desert. All these little oasis areas because there's a couple. Those are very fitting for like a summertime type vibe. Um, but I think I just shot this because I was like, you know, we haven't got a Gerudo Town shot. So shoot this. Uh, again, very blown out sky in that top left corner. Entire, basically top left half of the sky is just completely blown out, which is a shame because look at the beautiful color gradient uh, and clouds on that top right quadrant. Would have loved to have seen that kind of detail on that top left side. Um, and the pose is kind of eh. I like the headless Stalazalfos in the background. That's always kind of fun to have uh, the missing limb Stalazalfos. Also, very awesome that the uh, 
Other Stalazophos take their arms. If they can use them as weapons, they just take their friend's arms, their fellow soldier's arms uh, to beat me with. Uh, that's kind of funny. But you know what? This guy, we don't need to keep this shot. Again, I could probably crop pretty significant amount off the right and probably more the left side because I'd want to try to omit as much of that blown out sky and maybe crop up to the end of the shrine in that right midsection to kind of emphasize just the Stella's Alphos and Gerudo Town, which are the kind of the main subjects. I, I like the silhouette of the Divine Beast up there on the top left, but mm, that's not what I was really looking at. I was really looking at that beautiful waterfall of Gerudo Town uh, and then the sun rising up and the beauty of that sunrise. Uh, so we can delete that one. Not really that great. Uh, and then we did a nice little... Uh, uh, first time that we've done this and i would love to try to do more of more of this type of thing once we started doing this i realized that it is pretty cool to try to recreate uh album covers in this case it was a local band favorite of mine from back in the day oh actually i meant to do this hang on i forgot to it's not going to be a song of the day today. Oh, wait, hang on. I got to go out of YouTube studio. Hang on a second. Hang on. If you go, if you look at the TikTok, uh, I posted the clip of us taking the shot on TikTok, uh, and I added the, um, I added uh, the album cover image next to our, our recreation. Uh, so you do a side by side comparison. Um, but I want you all to hear the music. Underwood Agora. Agora Hills, dude. Underwood slash delusion at the key club. Oh, I gotta, somebody uploaded a bunch of cool, uh, Local video stuff from back in the Aria Decline 2003 at Canyon Club, dude. Somebody, whoever runs this YouTube account, I love you. I love you, maybe. I don't need you to love me back, dude. You are what you love, not what loves you. So, you know what? Whatever. Full album from 2003. Okay, hang on. Let's share this. Share this with y'all. Um, so yeah, not song, Johnny not Boy. song. Thank you, Johnny Boy. Thank you. Uh, so it's not the song of the day, but it's the it's just the album of the day. I do not necessarily expect anybody to listen to this, but uh, we tried to recreate uh, the the album cover from this album uh, here on here on 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 our our Thursday stream last week. So uh, I think we got a pretty decent. Also, because I was I was basing well, as I said, it is one of my favorite. I really love that album cover. My buddy Gary shot it. I don't know if you're here, Gary, but I love you. Um, and uh, he shot that. It's been one of my favorite photos for a long time. Gary's one of my favorite photographers. You know that, Gary. Um, and I absolutely love that photo. Uh, and and tried to recreate it just from memory. And I think I did a decent job. I think now that I've seen it after the fact, I've looked back at the album cover. Um, I was like, I could have changed a couple little things, but also this is not really indicative because this was, uh, this was shot in hopes of just having the composition, uh, which let me just, uh, we use that for the Hyrule compendium shot. And that is closer because of the square format is closer to the actual composition of the album, uh, artwork itself. Um, so uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And that was, I think that's kind of a fun idea. And that's something I think going forward, maybe we could try to do for certain, for certain streams is like try to recreate some fun album cover, <laughs> like approximate the album cover artwork in one of our images. I think that would be kind of fun personally. Um, or at least it was fun trying to do this. So I imagine that it might be kind of fun doing it for, for other, other shots. Um, uh, but you know, I don't need to get, because we have that saved in the compendium, um, it's not really necessary to save that. Plus it was not composed for 
a uh, full frame image. It was composed uh, specifically for that square format. Hot fortunes untold potentially await the lucky adventurer who finds one of these. Chests can often be found within shrines or at enemy camps, but there may be some crafty folks who think they're safer underground. True that. You find them buried all the time. Recoverable materials? Treasure. Treasure! Okay, so we don't need that. Do we delete that image? We can delete this image. We have it in the companion. That's pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, we only really walked away with two shots that I would really want to keep. And honestly, this shot of Kilton, I like it. Eh, but we can get better Kilton shots than that. Also, this one, this Gerudo Great Skellington shot. It's like, eh. We can maybe do better than that. I don't know. Uh, like I said, let's check out... Let's check out how it will appear from this opposite side. Uh, maybe we can get... Wait, what is that? That's not the Great Skellington. What am I even talking about? These are some cool... I thought this was the Great Skeleton, too. I mean, I guess that's probably part of it. Or is that another one? Unclear. Well, I guess you could probably... You could probably deduce that by looking at, like, how the vertebrae are aligned. Like, this is probably... Uh, an intelligent uh, player would probably be able to tell you, like, that that's... That's the upper five vertebrae, uh, and it's the same as on the Great Skellington, Gerudo Skellington, so obviously it's two separate skeletons. Ooh, here we go. Oh, shit, dude. That actually frightened me. Let me get a shot of these guys. Oh, you son of a bitch. I want one of these, dude. Oh, no. That's kind of cool. I'm going to save that one. But let's get a better shot, dude, if we can't. Oh. He's got to be facing us and, like, look right at me, man. I want him to look at me. That's actually a better shot for the compendium, though. I'm actually stoked on that compendium shot right there. I'm into that. A little bit more low contrast, but uh, you can see the face of the sucker a lot better. And he's held within that entire border, so let's keep that. Oh, he's gone. Dude, those guys, man. Those guys... Little too quick, but that's the fun of it. That's the fun of it. We have very limited amount of time to get that shot. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! Isn't that the one with the fairy fountain? Oh no. Okay, yeah. So that's the the fairy fountain one's the great skeleton. That's what I thought. This was the same one too, uh, but we're like a little further away. It just is, look. It's kind of was in the same direction as where we were facing. Uh, so we wanted to go over here uh, to Dragon's Exile area. Are these dragons? Do they have, I guess their arms and legs might be buried. Let's go check it out. Let's go check out if they have collarbones. Uh, but we did shoot that. We shot this a little bit last time. Uh, but we're checking out the other side. We'll check out the other side of it. Uh, and what we can do, it is daytime. Uh, but what's nice is that the sun and the moon pretty much follow the exact same... Uh, uh, trajectory across the sky so it's like uh, we can we can anticipate where the moon is gonna fall based on where the sun will fall which is nice so we don't have to we don't have to waste the whole night cycle uh, getting this shot okay yeah this is gonna be so much cooler in that other direction what the fuck I was thinking so the moon there's also this skull over here dude One of these giant skulls, which I don't think these are actual skeleton skulls. I think these are just carved. Oh, shit. Oh, dude. I thought that was like one of them Maldugas. Why can't I have water arrows that kill these guys easily? Oh, you son of a... Son of a... Yankee Doodle. I just want to take this guy out. I did not anticipate a fight. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Oh, shit, my health. Ooh, quick one. Yeah, I'm a quick one. Uh, remind me to build more of those. We're not going to probably do too much combat. Although, if we go over to the Hyrule Castle area, maybe. Nice little 
Dragon Bowbling Club. Um, but anyway, let's anticipate. Let's try to anticipate some moon moon sets. So this is kind of a cool. That's kind of a cool sky. I love that skeleton look. Or the 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 uh, skull, the way that they've carved. I, and again, I'm not. It's really not. No, 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 pal. You don't see me. Um, it's unclear if they carved. I think it's. I think they carved it out of stone. I do not think that is a gigantic petrified skull, right? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it is not. Um, but you know what? It's still some fitting, some fitting type of stuff for this. For what we're doing, so let's take one shot of this really quick while we're here. I love that blue in the sky, even though again, it's like I'm trying to get focus on on night stuff. But oh, just watching the light travel over all this stuff is really cool. Let's have it hit the skull, and then maybe if I could get a little vignette from another shadow in the foreground on top of that sand, I really wouldn't mind that. Like that, yep. That's pretty cool. A little bit low contrast, though. A little bit low contrast. Still pretty fun. Um, so maybe we won't really do that very much. Unfortunately, it's it's positioned, I mean, tactically very smart to put it on top of that little hill. Uh, but for photography, then that just means that we can get nothing but sky in the background. And again, I mean, coming to this side of at least the Great Skeleton purpose was to get a nice beautiful uh desert landscape in the background um and this great skeleton has a perfect perfect uh position to get something like that um so we'll watch where the sun goes down i believe it's gonna be I guess I can't tell from over here where um, which hill we were looking at that was looking like a pyramid. It might have been that one, or it might have been that one. I think it was, or maybe it was that one. I guess that would be... It's so hard to tell, because those are out of bounds, too, so I can't mark, unfortunately... I cannot mark those distant locations and have a good um, What the hell? Why isn't it? Well, you got to do this guy. No. Where the hell is the big red Yes, it's all the way over there. Okay. So yeah, it's so hard to tell which very hard to tell which which hill that was. Anyway, we'll 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 be able to tell from the from where the sun's gonna go down. And you know what, dude? I'm getting okay. Here's what we'll do. Let's get sunset with like this this Lizalfos here. We'll we'll fuck around a little bit with the composition. <sighs> okay, this color is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Let's save that one. I do not want him blocking that much of the skeleton itself, though. So let's actually move him onto the right side of the frame so he's in, yeah, in this area. Nice. Look at the shadow on the sand. That's what I'm talking about. The clouds look absolutely beautiful, too. Um, he's a little too close to the top of that skull though i think we can get a better shot than that although where'd that where'd that shadow go there it is Ooh, that's pretty cool i don't think we've ever had i don't think we've ever shot electric lizalfos like that before it's kind of obscuring again the background but Check out how it actually brought, being inside that little electric dome, it actually reduced the exposure on that top right corner of the frame because that was almost completely blown out from the sunset. That's pretty cool. Save that one. Still sweet shadow on the ground. We can get one more like this. Nope, not quite. Here we go. Beautiful shadow. 
Actually, I don't... This is actually a perfect opportunity to get these shadow shots because... Also, let's do this. Hmm, actually, that won't help. I wanted to get shockproof, but I'm going to be taking heat damage if we do that. And I'm not going to be able to move as fast in the sand. So I'll just keep this and we'll try to avoid that electrical attack where where we can. Um, let's get him down here a little further. But okay, the way they're positioned at the, at a lower elevation, I'm on the I'm I'm, I'm above them on these dunes, kind of. That's actually uh, giving us a really good opportunity to get the shadow because we are facing down, uh, allowing the shadow to be cast across the ground um, towards us like that. Uh, rather than if it falls down an incline into the background, you never really can see that shadow as well. <sighs> oh man, I wish his hand was in the frame. Look at that flying V in the top left corner. I would like to also point out. And the sword in his hand looks great, but that hand missing from the left side of the frame. Boring. Still keeping it, though. Uh, let's redo that. Got that flying V in there still. Get his shadow. Maybe not have... Oof, no, I want him leaping, dude. Kind of. There we go. Still got that flying V in there. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of lost detail on that sky, though. Very mar very large in the margin, uh, that, that lack of detail there. So, <sighs> that's okay. I'll keep that shot anyway. It's fine. Uh, we'll get some Stelazalfos popping out while we're trying to get the same type of thing. I do want to be further this way, though, so that this great skeleton is poised above the horizon a little bit. Uh, if possible, it might actually be might be difficult to grab that, depending on where the sun's going to set. Let's actually get rid of this. I feel like we got a sweet shot of this. Let's get one more. Oops. Get one more just for shits and giggles. There's another flying V popping up, too. Ooh, wait, wait, yeah. <sighs> Got the full dome in there that time. Flying V. That's heavy. Saving it. Um, okay, actually, no, you know, what do we want with this guy? I mean, shit, dude. One more good one with the flying V in there, my friend. Please. Oh, that flying V's right in the top of that edge. Just a little too much. That's not a good one. Delete that one. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. I'm not going to... I didn't want to... I didn't really want to mess around with him too much right now. We ain't got time. Halloween is coming up fast. And I really do want to get a good bearing on where the... Uh... You want me to throw this boomerang at you, pal? Because I could arrange that. Also, I'm liking that sword he had. Knight's broad, so maybe we'll grab that at some point. I can drop Rusty Halberd. Can take a hike. Um, okay, so it looks like, dude, we actually can place the... We'll be able to place the skeleton above the horizon line. The, the moon will be setting... There's the sun, so the moon should be literally following that exact same trajectory. Love the topography going on. My question is going to be, are we going to want more sky or more sand for the actual moon image? I'm going to do more sky right now because of that beautiful sunset color. Probably could have got that a couple seconds earlier, but that's okay. Whole point was trying to figure out where that moon's going to uh, show up, which we did. Let's actually do a quick review before we get into the night cycle here. Um, this shot, eh. I'm not, you know, this one's fun, but it's like I don't really need this one. I don't think that's, it doesn't really emphasize the... Um, it doesn't really emphasize the skeleton enough. Maybe we should get closer to the skeleton on this type of shot for the moon variant. 
This one, again, could have been great if that hand was in there and they weren't stacked up against the skeleton too much. Let's delete that. We don't need that. Um, neither of these... Uh, what are these things called? It's treasure Octorok. Neither of these Treasure Octorok shots came out very well. We can just get rid of those. Even though we did end up one, uh, with one of those as a better shot for the compendium. So I'm proud about that. Proud on that one, but otherwise not. Um... This shot's kind of cool. Saw man, thank you, dude. Saw man, coming through, man. Thank you very much. Hope I do not disappoint. Thanks for all the love and support, man. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope your night's going well. Let's do this. Did you use Did you use uh, Scream Labs for a Halloween discount? Did that work? Did that Is that what that is for? By the way, is like the Is it a subscription discount? I don't know what the Scream Labs. I'm not really privy with uh, these these promo code things. Anyway, I hope you got a discount. Even though I'm worth full price, okay? I'm worth full price. There's a shot we got. This is a very this is a good creepy compendium shot that we had, we had taken on the stream. Not happy the keys is sideways, but maybe that also makes the image kind of cool. Uh, I don't need this shot of the the skull fort the the uh, uh, Boko Goblin Skull Fort. I don't think this is necessary. I, d I think it's pretty cool, but it's just, uh, I think the the contrast being that low kind of made this a lot less impressive. Twitch Prime gives uh, one free sub a month. Streamer gets the same amount of money. Uh, oh, that's a Prime thing. Streamlabs is a Prime discount thingy or whatever. I, th I just didn't know if it was like September. Sub packs more, by the way. Um, yep. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Y'all deserve discounts. I would give everything away for free if I had my way. I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, this picture probably could have been really cool had it been very high contrast. I don't like the low contrast just deadens that blue in the sky and a vivid blue, uh, with a nice, a nice bright, yellow sand below it could have worked out really well. And that is kind of the color scheme of our, uh, dark room, uh, uh, theme here, I guess, color scheme theme. Uh, we don't need that one. I want to make sure we have plenty of room when we get into this night cycle. And then now I got this shot of the full, this full electrical dome versus this one where we're kind of inside that dome, which is a cool shot. Don't get me wrong. I actually think both of them are pretty rad. But this one, the Great Skeleton, is a little bit more prominent. Here it's getting a little lost in that electrical interference from that little electrical dome thing. Um, so let's just delete this one. We'll keep that guy. And then I like this shot, I think, better than this one because we have that full shadow in the frame here so we'll keep that and delete that one um and then we're back to we're back to a healthy amount of uh images that we can take oh now it's getting cold so we got to swap to our cold gear sticking with the sand boots though i'm not losing my speed bonus i refuse to lose the speed bonus here uh, and then what can we shoot looking in this direction? There's another skull fort, but nothing's really facing us. Here, we can get these ruins, because we're going to get a beautiful moonrise in just a second over these hills. And there's this little patch of ruins right here. Looks like an enemy encampment, though. Okay, wait, even better. Even better, dude. This is what we want. This is exactly what we want. We want... Uh, any kind of stall enemy, and these stall moblins are great. Let's do this, though. Ow. Let's do... I want to get this guy's... Or this... I want to grab uh, this dragon bone. Uh, yeah, I want to grab this dragon bone spear, because that's going to... That casts weird shadows, and it's way too elongated. He'll grab that sword we just dropped, hopefully. And then we have two enemies with interesting... Although, even that Moblin arm that he's holding is kind of silly looking, maybe. But, anyway. 
That's fine. Let's put them over here. Let's get them into these lower part of the dunes so we can be facing upwards towards the sun or the moonrise. No, no, no. Don't fade the music out yet. I'm not done with you yet. Oh, no. Are we getting so far that it's... Once you get to a certain distance away from any of these inhabited areas, you just go into that whiteout of a, of a dust storm. There's that moon. Okay, hang on. Swing at me, Bat. Oh. Oh. Little bit too much sky with nothing in it. That is the sacrifice we make when we're fighting these large enemies. So let's back off, zoom in a little bit. If we can. Ooh, that could be... Dude, we're going to get... Hang on, let me get a better compendium image of that. Uh, style Moblin, too. Hang on. No! We've got to get him to swing at us. I don't think that's going to... Not quite framed right. I'm still going to use that as the compendium shot. Ooh. Hang on, swing at me. Let me back off. Okay, I like that for the compendium, and then let's actually focus on getting cool, actually well-framed. <sighs> Style Moblin. With Moon. With Crescent Moon. That's okay. I feel like we need something else in the background. I, uh... well, we got this guy just chilling by himself. Let's see what he's up to. He's, he's got two arms, after all. No, 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 don't leave, dude. No, 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 no. Why would you leave me? Is this guy going to be gone, too? You're still rocking. Yeah, what the hell is going on with... Why didn't you want to... You didn't want to stay and play. Oh, I love those skeletal shadows. But again, we want to be... If you want that full shadow, you got to get them to be uh with the sh you want the shadow to be going uphill all right do we want to no, we want it going down we want the shadow going downhill i think it depends on what position i'm at compared to said shadow Ooh, there we go Shadow's not quite held completely in the frame, but that's okay. I love that he's missing one arm. Little lopsided composition, though. I could probably use a little bit more detail in that sky on the top right, but that's okay. We'll save that one. Let's try for a close-up. I think with the size of this guy... Raise your sword up. Raise your sword up and swing at me, pal. Oh, well, don't hit me. Dude. Come on, dude. What? What's your... What? He's like, I'm missing an arm. I gave you all I had. I'm over it. Oh, that moon's going away. Are we still in position for the... Uh, let's actually get him... Let's kite him over here. We got this... There's, a, there's that rusty halberd again. Thing won't leave me alone. No, 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 dude, why is he... I think he's gone past his little... His little jurisdiction area. And he's gonna... He's just gonna disappear, huh? Freeze him. Oh! Oh, I wish I got him with the horn at the... Top of the frame actually not cut out. That's so close. Oh, that could have been really cool. I love that he's bursting out of that ice, though. That's a really cool effect and something we can keep in mind to try to grab. I'm going to save that. Still keeping this old one for the compendium. Let's do that again, dude. Come here, face me. Okay, do that, and then let's do... Oh, fuck. That was bad timing on my part. Okay, one more of these type of bursting shots. Oh. Mm. 
I'll save it, but I really want to get back to our position over by the great skeleton. I'm actually going to let this guy be just with the hopes that not killing him will allow him to maybe either stick around or pop back up later. I'm pretty sure once they bail on you, though, they're gone. Okay, we just want to be in position for this guy. Great Skellington. Again, I think I want it kind of above the... I would love the jaws to be above the horizon because that definitely emphasizes uh, how large this is, but I was also kind of hoping we'd get that moon as much as we could and maybe not having that skeleton above the horizon is going to help us out because look at this. Ugh. That's beautiful. Wish there were some more clouds in the sky. Not bad, though. Okay, so let's try to push in and try to get... Also, I'd love to be looking down the length of this guy, but that just is not going to line up right. Okay, let's fall back and zoom in a tiny bit. Let that, let that moon re-emerge from those clouds. If it, if it will, if it will. Come on, give me one more good shot. Pop right out. Oh, I think we, oh, there it comes. Get it in focus, kinda. Oh! It's a little too low in the sky. And again, it just sucks that the detail in the sky gets kind of lost. Um, and then let's go for, maybe we can get one right on the horizon with just the skull. We have more time though, because it's not falling behind a hill. It's gonna be falling right into that little zone in the background. Oh, look at that atmosphere. Little plume of dust on the bottom left side. Moon looks great. I'm pretty happy with that one. Um, let's try to get another inside his jaws shot though with that last little bit that we have. And we can put him above the horizon with the teeth and we can get the moon in the center of the frame. So it's in focus like that. I'm into that one. It's heavy. Uh, I said this last time, the shadow on the ground would be great with those teeth. And if we had some cool jagged uh, teeth uh, shadows on the floor in the foreground, that'd be great. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up... Let's save that shot. Um, they just aren't showing right now. Not showing your teeth enough, my friend. Maybe I should have done this, dude. This is what I probably... Why didn't we get that shot? Maybe we can come back. Because there's that shadow on the ground, but now obviously the light source is coming from the opposite side. Um, since now it's going to be that... I know the sun is gone and the moon is gone, but the sun... Uh, the light from the sun is actually what's illuminating or what will be the sun rising up is illuminating that. Let's try to come back and get maybe a similar shot to that though. That's kind of, that's kind of rad. Can also get like the full length of the skeleton maybe. Yeah, dude, that would have been f sweet, dude. Why didn't we do this? Obviously we want that full skeleton snout in there. Yeah, you know what? We got a, well, other than my shadow on the floor like that, but that's obviously not going to happen when the light source is on the opposite side. That shot could be really fun though. So let's kind of, let's try to remember that. Got one kind of similar. See, so like here we're like actually seeing inside those jaws. These aren't too bad. Good first attempt. Um, okay, so now it's gonna be sun rise. Do we wanna do anything as sunrise? I kinda just wanna jump. 
First of all, let's just do, I like the way this looks right here. So let's do a quick, quick obligatory self-portrait. With the way these dunes look is really cool. It's like, eh, well, you know, it's cold. Check out the dunes. My breath. No. I'll save that, but I'm going to delete it right now. Still keeping that old picture for the compendium. Obligatory self-portrait accomplished, but eh, not excited about it. Uh, let's go. Let us go. What else do we want to do here? What else? Oh, we said we were going to come scout out. Let's go scout out uh, Lomai really quick. We'll jump up to Sumashama Shrine. Sumashama. Sumasama. That's what John Goodman's saying in, in Big Lebowski. It's not Shadow Shamans. Which was a, would have been a huge reference to Stardew, of course. Uh, but you know what? But you know what? That's fine. Okay, Sumasama. Sumasama. Lovely vantage point. Oh, I thought the snowflakes were stars, and I was like, oh, wow, the stars are actually, like, shining through really well from this, this elevation. That was not the case. They are snowflakes, Polly boy. Okay, so here's what we can do. Let's grab... I love these above perspectives. That's how we did Skull Lake. So let's just get the form of the labyrinth like this. Because that looks pretty cool. I'm into that. Save that one. We have four more pictures we can take. God, I run out of space so fast in here. But I will eventually, again, maybe delete like everything. Maybe I'll get tired of every of like all of these and be like, okay, we got a clean house. Just oh, just uh, obliterate, obliterate all the images here. Hard. It's gonna be hard to do. Maybe I'd like keep three of my favorite Triforce and all. You know. Um, here, let's delete. Like I said, this one I do really like this shot of Stone Talus, but you know, it doesn't fit the creepy vibe right now. So we can delete that one. Gotta keep double rainbow because that's our only double rainbow shot. Blood Moon over Eventide. Uh, you bet I'm keeping that one. Electric Choo Choo. Maybe I'm getting kind of tired of this shot. I'll keep it for now, though. Lorland Village, the Crescent Moon setting on the other side. I love that. Love that shot. Gotta keep that one. Gotta keep Kilton and Blood Moon because that was like such a such a rare opportunity to grab that uh spinches in a tune valley with the moon rising above love that one keeping that one skull lake this is what i was talking about from these one of these elevated almost looks like an aerial type shot of that landscape i really like this one of, of skull skull lake it's very it's very nice when you had a vision in mind and it didn't work out for reasons maybe beyond your control. It's just this this type, the shot that I saw in my head of Skull Lake really wasn't possible um, just due to the, the lack of, of vantage points that we could get on the lake itself. So we came and we found a different spot uh, and we framed it in a completely different way than we originally intended, but I really ended up enjoying the way this shot looks. I'm actually pretty happy um, with this Skull Lake image, so uh, keeping that one for now. Love the shot of the Blood Moon over Lomai. Loving that. Never getting rid of Falling Star, Shooting Star, Falling Star Fragment over Hyrule Castle with this full moon about to set on the other side of it. Love that shot, keeping that. Um, love these moon silhouette shots. As much as I really love this shot of the Spire with the full moon uh behind it or the spire silhouetted in front of the full moon kind of bummed that the moon actually fell out of focus because it looks so much more impressive here 
uh, where we have everything in focus from the foreground to the background. This image also feels maybe a little bit more well balanced to me. I kind of wish there was some red, uh, smoky, whatever, swoopy swipe of stuff, Ganon's swipe of red stuff. I wish some of those swoopy red things were happening in the top right corner because there's not really anything happening there. Um, you could, I could, again, crop this. Also, I've said that those pillars that are sticking up out of the ground around the castle uh, make it uh, difficult to incorporate those in any of the compositions that I've tried to get uh, with the castle involved. Uh... I'll keep both those for now. It's fine. It's fine. Keep that one. Kilton. I guess I got to kind of keep Kilton. No, I can delete this Kilton shot. It's okay, but it's like... I mean, compared to Kilton in the Blood Moon, you know what I mean? Which I know we don't really see him in there. That's not a good Kilton portrait. It's more Kilton's balloon photograph. Uh, because here I hadn't spoken with him yet, so he was turned around. Although what's funny is that his his little jacket that he wears um, has like patches on the hood that make it kind of look like, or the patches on the back of it or whatever it is that he's wearing. Let me see what his, his close-up look like he's wearing. He's got kind of like a hooded shirt of some kind on. Um, and there's like patches on it that make it look like a face from the back that match his style of balloon too hodgepodge patchwork style balloon that he's got. Um, I'm just, but I would rather have seen his face, I think in that shot. So uh, these close-ups are the opportunity to get detail of his character uh, rather than uh, his actual means of conveyance, you know? Uh, so we can delete this one. We're going to go like, let's go right now. Actually, maybe try to find after we shoot maybe a little bit more of the Lomai here we can find another Kilton uh, to, to try to grab a shot of. We'll delete that one. I don't need that one right now. Um, still love that shot. We'll keep that for now. Love that one. This one's great, dude, with that full electric ball and the great skeleton and some beautiful distant sand dunes in the background and a flying V and a pretty cool-looking sunset going on. I'm digging that. Should have tilted down on this one a little bit. That one might have been okay. But you know what? I can delete this one. I don't need that. In fact, all these style moblin, maybe this one or that one. Pretty much all these first ones, though, when this, the moon is too low on the horizon, just didn't doesn't feel right. There's too much negative space around all the interesting subjects in there. Um, this one's okay. That one feels okay. I love the uh, the rim light, the glow around the edge of their body that they get when they're backlit like that. Absolutely love that. Ah, this shot is so close to something cool. I love that shadow on the ground. But something about it doesn't feel right. I'd rather this one than this one, I think. Neither of them are my favorites. Uh, I love this one of them bursting out of that ice wish i tilted up that's yeah, very true this one I, th I think this one's cool you can see the shape and the form of him better in that one um keep that one keep that one you know in this shot it's like a lit this one we i think it, it got a little too low contrast there's not much detail in the sky at all so let's delete this. And once it got low to the horizon, that's when we needed to push in and get just the just the mouth and the jaws, which we got. That shot looks cool. This shot's really cool. And then again, this shot, but like this, is what I'm really going to want to try to to grab. Um, I think I like. I like this wide, and then I like this one when the moon is inside the jaw versus this one where it's outside the jaw, though that there is some pretty cool atmosphere going on there, but it also lost some contrast. 
Uh, so keep that one, keeping this one as a placeholder just until we get that moonshot. And then I, I do enjoy this shot of, this, of Loma Labyrinth right here. Let's workshop this thing. Let's keep that one for now. Workshop it a little bit. What do we have down there? Cold-footed wolf? Oh, yeah. And a little... Little dove. What are those things called? Too far for me to recognize. Um... Let's try to get down to one of these lower shelves and see the difference. Oof. See, maybe that's too... We're either going to have to get back up. Do I want to try to get a shot of the cold-footed wolf with this thing? I don't think that's going to really be possible. Just don't tell me what's possible. Just try, buddy. Oh. Well, I mean, that's kind of it. Lo my Labyrinth is in there and the wolf is in there. I wish we got him howling. I'll delete that. Why save it? Oh, here we go. Oh, that's exactly where I needed to be. Oh, I was like, he's going to have to go into that little tiny slope if I want to look down and see Lo my, and there it is. But it, bad composition on him or bad pose on him and well, pretty much bad composition as well. I'd want him popping out from one side of the frame, maybe like that. At least facing me. It looks like he's stuck or something. This is... I'm reaping all the benefits. There we go. Okay, that's pretty cool. Although I should tilt up a little more, but... I mean, that's pretty rad. Okay, let's save that. Tilt up. Maybe get that same shot just without so much foot room. I like that wolf photo better. Oh, there we go. Save that one. I think I can tilt up maybe even a little bit more. Maybe push in. No, dude. Go back to your little glitched out state you were in. He's like, you took advantage of me when I was in a time of crisis. Time crisis, as others might refer to. Great video game. Um. See now that 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 now that whole bottom section doesn't really feel good because it's not a platform for the the wolf to stand on. It's just obscuring the whole bottom of my frame. So we can delete that and let's get to the edge of this shelf and try to get a good just looking down view of just this beautiful structure here. You know, I actually think we might. It might be possible to get the moon setting just above the hills. With Lomai in that bottom portion of the frame. I think that's possible. I'd really have to let the very edge of the labyrinth ride pretty much like I'd have to tilt up. I'd have to be sacrificing a portion of the actual structure itself to include that that horizon with the moon setting. But that could be a real cool shot. Maybe we should do... Maybe we should do a night cycle here. Let that moon... Let that moon go down... So it's just so barely, so barely making, making the grade though. Um, let's do this. I feel like I could also, maybe we don't need it completely centered. Maybe because I'm liking this little valley on the right side. So maybe we kind of just frame it kind of further on the left. And then we have this other little shelf to drop down to here now. Maybe that'll help us out. The lower we get, uh, that should bring the horizon down in the frame. So getting lower is going to help me out as long as we can hold the structure in the frame as well. But it's so hard to get the actual horizon while maintaining a good view on the actual labyrinth. That's my problem here. That's not going to work out at all. 
I don't know. It might be a waste of an. Oops, I didn't mean to jump down yet, but now let's check it out from this vantage point. Um, but we're also. Eh, getting lower is great, but then we're also getting closer, which is making it harder to keep the actual labyrinth in there completely. That actually might work. Something like that. Obviously, we want to be parallel with the actual structure. I would like it to be parallel with the, the lines of the structure, the bottom part of the frame. That actually could be really cool. And this, the moon should be setting just above those hills in the distance. And if we're lucky, we'll have that entire desert landscape basked in moonlight. I could probably tilt up a tiny bit in, in that composition once we get there, but we'll come back. Yeah, see, if I walk this way, we get we eat into this shelf. Um, so we want this spot. So let's do this. Let's set our let's set our travel medallion here. I don't remember where I had placed it last, but that it, I don't think it's something that we care about anymore. What am I doing? Why can't I see it? What am I doing? Why? Oh, there it is. What am I doing? Okay, perfect. What is this? Is this a Korok? Yeah, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, which, uh, you know what that does is that actually presents us with another opportunity. Oh, I wish they were on the edge of this rock a little more. Cause if we had them, if they were positioned right up here, we could probably get a sweet little Korok portrait over the desert landscape, but that's not going to happen. Now is it? Cause they're too far recessed into this little zone and it's, they're on an incline looking up, which we could do. We could do Divine Beast and Korok. We could do this. I just don't like how much of that foreground is in the frame because we have to tilt down onto them. Uh, but that actually, you know what? If we come back here at the right time, the moon should be riding over the top of the Divine Beast and maybe we can get a funny Korok shot even though, again, I, I, no matter what, I'm not getting away. I'm not getting away from that foreground just eating into my frame that much. So that's okay. Okay, so we have our vantage point picked out for this. That's going to be pretty sweet. Um, I would say. I can tell you. We'll get a cool shot like that. Uh, yeah, we'll fuck around with the framing once we actually get here to to shoot, but something like that. I don't mind that the bottom wall, the wall, what would be, um, I guess, is that the, the southernmost wall of the labyrinth? I think that would be the southernmost. I don't mind that that's riding the bottom of the frame. That doesn't really bother me. As long as we're keeping it parallel, as long as it's not going to end up uh, being diagonal at all across the frame, I'm, I'm going to enjoy that. Uh, and then ideally, I think we'll have enough time if we, if we grab this shot, like right, right as the moon is getting into position here, um, I think we'll have enough time to jump over to the great skeleton and then get that, the jaws, uh, eating, that crescent moon, if it's still, I think it should still be crescent for a couple more nights. Uh, whoop, 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 that's fine. Okay, so that's picked out and that's plotted. Let's actually put, let's put our travel medallion up here just so it doesn't end up. Uh, I don't want it to end up in the frame if we end up trying to recompose a different shot of this of this Korok because I'd love that shot too I'd love to get we'll, we'll be here for the 
beginning of the moon cycle because the moon will be rising basically right behind us and then heading over past that divine beast over the hills on this side. We can grab this portrait here. Which again, I don't know how happy I'm going to be about that just because of how low. Maybe if we just slice it like this. Like a real tight no, because in that whole wall, I was in, I was interested in, in seeing some of this landscape. Again, if this Korok was up here more, we'd have a lot more to play around with. But that's just not happening, um, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, so I guess we can kind of just camp out. Might as well just camp out here, I would say. Do our old bundle of stick salt man trick. Ooh, that actually might that actually might be actually might be good to have a little uh, lighting uh, element up here because then we have our Korok. We've lit our Korok as well. If, if that ends up looking like a decent shot, which I'm not ecstatic about it right now, but you know what? Sometimes things can look better than you you hope. I just want it on this ledge so I don't accidentally step in it as I'm trying to compose around our Korok friend. Let's use our flint flint stone. I call him I call it Barney. Oh god damn it. No! Twee! I didn't want you to uh, uh. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm not hit. Am I not hitting the flint? I guess not. Why can't I hit the flint, man? Uh. Uh, okay, let's drop them both at the same time. What am I thinking? Hold the flint. Hold the wood. Hold the pickles. I want it my way. Is it because I'm just not using the right way? That's what it is. It's just, you have to have a metal weapon to create sparks. Douche. You douche caucus. Why can't I equip in the middle of an attack animation? This is already taking some damage. Okay, perfect. Okay. Until nighttime, please. Thank you. Also, let's save because I haven't saved for a while. If anybody came late, I'm I'm supposed to be dressed as McFly from uh from Game of Thrones. Marty McFly from Game of Thrones. Oh, look at the Korok shadow. That's pretty rad looking. That's the benefit of him having a good foreground space to stand on. Uh, but I can't I can't get back far enough to incorporate the entire shadow. That's okay though. Um Yeah, so how would we even want the Korok to be I don't know, because that wall, I don't like this wall. I want to stay away from that wall, so I have to really pan to the left to stay away from that. Whatever. The Korok shot's a bonus. I'm really not expecting this to be... <sighs> that might be kind of fun. I really wish the Divine Beast was facing the other direction. So we had that beam, the red beam, cutting through. We already have all those lines from both that foreground rock... And uh, the plateau uh, that the divine beast is standing upon, all those little those little desert plateaus up there, all creating nice lines across the whole frame. So having that red line going across too wouldn't have felt too bad. Not gonna get it though. How many shots do we have? Ten. Okay, that's perfect. I don't even know if the moon's gonna even fall. That to, if uh, I've not seen how the moon uh, ends up looking from this vantage point. So it might that might not work. Again, we're posted up here mostly for this, but let's also, let's go grab something down here for a minute while we are, uh, while we're waiting the moon to uh, pass over 
closer to this side because we we're gonna it's gonna be a couple minutes, so we might as well go grab something. Over at Masai Suma Shrine, of course. This is the first place most people would assume that I'm gonna go, and you would be correct in that assumption. Thank you. Mm. Masai Suma. Because the moon will be popping. Popping up in a second, and then we can grab. Bam, 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 bam. Where will it be popping up? Right over here, right? Ooh, loving. This is the way. Is this where you fight the Malduga? Is this the spot? No, that's where. Where's that? That's at the testing arbiter's ground. That's over here, right? Where did you fight that Malduga? Southern Oasis is probably beautiful, too. We'll check that out at some point. Um, but you know what? Talking about wanting to get some... Some sort of almost... Oh, Gravestone-like structures. That is doing it for me. They're almost like little tiny... Gravestone monoliths. I guess we are not at crescent moon phase anymore, though, so that's kind of a bummer, but that's okay. Uh, should I sleep a couple days then? No, let's not be let's not be an asshole about it. Let's just let's just make let's make magic happen. Okay, okay, it's composed for this shot because I'm really digging this landscape now. Moon that I cannot see, but hopefully it's right up there. Yeah, I got to tilt up a little more, so maybe I'll widen out. And I just, I just moved camera left. Let's move camera right again because I would love the shadows to be coming towards the camera. That would be my ideal. That first shot actually looked pretty cool, though. Let's actually come on this side, though. Oh, shit. Look at all these wolves. Come here, dudes. Come here, dudes. Give me some wolfage. Frozen wolf in front of the moon. Hang on, dude. We're going to freeze a sucker. Let's keep the damage low. Damn, dude. Oh, shit. Did that kill it? Okay, let's not do that again until we're ready for it to die. And why did the other one just bail? Here I am sitting here. You guys are making me feel like a total asshole. Whatever. You know what? I live my life the way I want to. If you don't like it, you don't have to stick around. Let's grab this mushroom really quick, by the way. Where'd the freaking shadow go? Oh, it's behind. Okay. I was like, the shadow that I love, which is that... Uh, the shadow coming right towards us from the... Uh... Let's actually get this cactus in the frame. Maybe that's what we want. With these volt fruits on it. Where's our moon? It's a little too high up now. This could have been a really cool shot. I'm still going to take it. That is really freaking rad. Cactus look beautiful in my opinion, okay? I know the moon's not going to be in there, but we have that beautiful cactus shadow, and then there's still some of those ruins along the right side as well. I'm into that. Let's save that guy, and then maybe we can get like a close-up. Oh, also, what am I doing? We're also getting really distracted. Okay, we took a couple cool shots there. Go back to our travel medallion. Uh, start working out. Getting the shot we actually planned. Thank you. You can replenish health by consuming fruits and veggies. As well as me. Okay. A lot of you like to forget that. Okay, so let's see. The Korok shot would be first, I think, in terms of where the moon is going to pop up if it does, which, yeah, see, it's not going to really, it's not going to really reach. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to reach the point that I, I was hoping. I think it's going to be too far up above. Ideally, it would have been right down 
right down over these hills here with that divine beast uh, at a similar height. Because, like, right now, I mean, oh, yeah, I can't even hold. I got to be, can't even be there. I got to be here. Can't even be there. Well, the moon's behind the clouds. Yeah, that's not, that's not. A Korok shot, I don't think that's going to happen. If it does, it's not going to include the Divine Beast. If it does, it's going to be like. <sighs> yeah, let's not even worry about that shot. That's just not, that doesn't feel, I'm so restricted here. Because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. Not into it. Also, I thought I had this light source lit, but I guess this, that, that bundle of sticks disappeared. So we can get like something like this. But now the divine beast looks so minuscule. I was reading about this frog species that scientific name is mini skewl. There's like three names that have these awesome size puns going on. It's pretty fun. It's fun. Mini skewl. It's like minuscule something else. I'm not gonna think of this. Here we got this. Okay. See, no, that's it's like all this all those elements are way too way too spaced out way too spaced out there just delete that one let's 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 just get in in position for lomai oh no you silly man climb back up quickly we are losing the light okay parallel the wall on the bottom of the frame tilt up Ooh. The moon looks awful, though. Because I can't hold it in focus. There's no way. There's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to hold that in focus. Okay, so let's bail on this shot. Because that's I, I just don't see that working out. The center of my frame... Are those those peaks on on that little ridge above the the labyrinth, and that's where the focus is going to be held. So I cannot unless I tilt up, and then really quickly tilt down and somehow hold this type of composition, which I don't think is going to happen. So let's go get in position. It's you know it was a good attempt. Let's go get in position though. Uh, for our our plotted. Great Skellington shot. Because that's what I want to see. And then I'm probably going to wrap up. I am. I do not. I do not have the energy tonight. If also, if you missed it. If you missed. Earlier, I was saying I had just gotten my. Um, oh, shit. Are we going to miss this? Yeah, we're missing it, dude. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Okay, I missed that. I missed our opportunity on that one. Dicking around with that low my labyrinth shot, which I think was worthy. It was a worthy use of our time, but I really do want, now that I've seen this image, I really want that because there are those, there's that shadow I wanted along the bottom of the frame with the teeth. We have a beautiful texture of sand along the bottom uh, left side, riding that whole bottom edge diagonally down. I love that. And then we should have the moon right be behind that thing's little jaws. Totally fucked that up, though. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We're going to time scum the shit out of this. Um, and we'll wait for a full moon because the next phase is not going to be my favorite either. Uh, well, let's just get rid of this electric keys because I don't want to. Well, wait a second. Well, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get too feisty, Paul. We got moblins. We got keys. We got great skeleton. 
Let's incorporate all of them into the frame. Eh. It's pretty tough to get that many I that many items uh, composed well that quickly, so whatever. I'll save that shot. It's still okay. Still a better shot of the electric keys there. Let's do... Ooh. It's not bad. That keys doesn't look like anything in the background. I'll say that. How many shots do we have? So, yeah, I love that new compendium shot. Uh, we have a few shots on the roll. I can delete some of those if we really need to. These guys are about to disappear in less than an hour. Um, let's do this. So let's sleep. I'm just going to sleep two cycles. I'm going to sleep through two night cycles. Uh, with the hopes that we get a full moon. Oh, you can't pass time when enemies are near. No wonder. Whoops. Crit you. Crit you to death. Oh, it didn't break? There we go. I'm probably to get rid of another. No, I guess I did have enough. Okay. Um, so let's sleep. We're going to sleep for uh, another, let's see, is it daytime? So we sleep till night, right? Uh, I guess I'll wait and see what the moon is going to look like. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be full yet. I think we have two more nights until we get a beautiful, big, glowing ball of a moon. Um, and with that time, while we're waiting for it to come up, here's what we'll do is we'll try to get uh, another sweet cactus shot. Cactus in the desert type photo. Let's go wide and just, just have that like entirely fitting in the far right side of the frame like that, kind of. Obviously, let's put it, obviously we want to put that Put that uh, cactus between those plants, those other little brush on the ground. Getting a little far away now, though. Um, I want in the void between all those plants, though, like that. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's going to be more something like this. That feels very, those, all, those elements all feel very far to the right side of the frame, though, with nothing happening on their left. Can I cut these guys? Probably not with the dull freaking bone arm. Let's use a sword. Yeah, okay, get rid of that one. Let's get rid of all these little shrubberies, actually. Let's just really simplify. Really simplify the subject here. Now we can be really wide without worrying about where we're putting the, putting all that stuff. See, a shot like that could be really cool, although I'd like to maybe incorporate more of the shadow. At least have it be a leading line like that in the bottom. Let's let that moon come. Actually, if I tilt up enough, we can get that moon in focus too, huh? actually you know we'll do one of these ah you damn focus there we go not bad i would tilt down more but that's gonna throw the focus onto the foreground and not allow the moon to come into focus so it's pretty heavy i'm into it <laughs> uh and then let's do like yeah, I'm going to save that one. That's, that's kind of fun. Hang on. Let's come back, try to get the entirety of the cactus. No, it's not going to happen. Never mind. Uh, how about how about this side? Let's get rid of these. Yeah, you want that beautiful shadow in there like that. Look how elongated it is. 
I don't want, I really don't want any of that, that crud in the background. I, ideally, I would have just the rolling dunes of the desert with this cactus and the, and the moon, but that, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, either way, I didn't mean to shoot this for that long. I wanted to just make sure that that moon wasn't going to be in full cycle yet. So now that we determined it is not, now we can just jump back. Is our fire pit gone already? I guess it is. It's fine. We can craft more. Craft them as much as I want, you know? Um, if I go to night again, is it going to do a full 24-hour cycle? Let's find out. Fuck it. Let's find out. Why... Dude, why ask? Do my own research, Polly boy. Okay, see, like, that is this view here. That is, like, the desert landscape backdrop that I'd like to see and compose all of these subjects around... Um, because here we're looking actually out into the edge of the map, so there's not all this clutter of other elements going on. Also, does this thing just disappear after a minute? Is that what happens? Is like, because it was there a second ago, and then we walked over to the cactus, and then it didn't, it didn't work out. Okay, let's actually do this this time. Let's say let's say we're gonna shoot this cactus on this side now. Tilt up a little bit. There we go. Oh, I want to block that divine beast right now because it's not not really working for me in the composition. Okay, there's that moonlight. There's the moon. That looks pretty full to me. Ooh, look at the little dust just coming over. I love the simplicity of that image, although I, in all honesty, that, that moon would be much more well suited to the right side of the frame. It's a little bit too close to our actual hero, which is that cacti. Cactus. Why is it plural? Um, so, uh, I just don't know what to do. No, that's great. That's an okay shot. We'll keep that one. Let's actually see how the moon ends up. I don't want the... I would like to avoid the Divine Beast, but... It, Maybe like this then, so we can have just the complete desert landscape. And I'm still tilted up enough to hold the moon in focus here. Got that glint off those volt fruits. Although here, I mean, I guess we'll save that as well. How many more shots? We have one more shot in the roll. Okay, so we, we, we need to make, do some, we, we gotta we got do some vetting here. Do some damage. Damage control. Um, this shot's boring as fuck with that with the with that electric keys in there. This one as well, whatever. This one was our tester shot. No. Almost uh, almost got that labyrinth shot. I, I do love this shot of the cactus there. I'd love that shot. Really actually love this shot too. Wish the moon was in focus, as always. This shot of the labyrinth is. I do like this one with the wolf in there too. That's kind of fun. This is, this is okay. This is, I really do wish we could have held that moon in there better for this type of shot. Oh, well. Just delete that. Loving that one. This one's kind of, eh. That was just our tester shot. This was ex similar to the shot we're going to get now, but with the moon just setting uh, between those jaws and the horizon. Delete that one. See, like this, uh, uh, but we'll get it with the full engulfed jaw in the frame. 
That shot's nice too, though. I love these ones of the wolf. I don't know which one of these I like better. I think I tilted this one I like his his pose better and his expression. But then this one I kind of like the overall composition. We'll save those and we'll talk about it next time. How about that? Um This shot looks cool. These ones I don't think worked out quite as well. Let's try to get this shot again now with a full moon. This one didn't really work out. And this one's a little, a little too strange. So we'll keep that one. Um, okay, this one of the moblin, whatever. Let's just delete that. We gotta make some more room. I like this one of the exploding ice around this moblin, style moblin. Really wish the moon just held in focus, though, but that's fine. Love that shot of the almost the entire great skeleton with that crescent moon overhead. Loving that. Loving that. That one's okay. And I think we have plenty of room to shoot out this last little thing that I wanted to do. Uh, if I don't just keep shooting this freaking this cactus, which I'm tempted to do because of how freaking beautiful it looks. Stop being so beautiful, Cactus, and I won't photograph you as much. But for now, I want you to... I want you to just be you. Get rid of that little thing. Okay, so as soon as the moon gets over here... As soon as it comes down... Nice, big, beautiful full moon. It might be... We might get a blood moon next next time if 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 the timeline that we've that we've uh, had our, uh, every time we play if if the the, the about three pl plays three play cycles three streams uh, seems to end up being as long as it takes to get uh, the blood moon to pop back up. Okay, and this is the shot that we want. Jaws. We could get, maybe get some of the fairy fountain. I didn't want to include the fairy fountain because it's a fairy fountain. It's very... It's not very spooky looking. You know what I mean? Like, this is... So we kind of want to keep that down below. Like I said, we want... I love the, the sand... Kind of riding the bottom left edge of the frame. Then it makes it really feel like the skeleton is somewhat like buried and dilapidated or something like that. We zoom in or zoomed out all the way. See more of the spine if we come this direction. So it's going to be something like that with that beautiful full moon just sitting in the background there. If we can. If we can. How's it coming down here? How are you coming down, my friend? You're coming down good. You know, we might as well shoot some cool shots like on this side of the thing while we're here right eh, maybe not i don't know if any of this is gonna yeah just let that fall into place just fall into place for me please call me fall into place paul yeah let's just wait this out I want to be looking down the length of the skeleton as much as we can. Okay, I see the glow from the moon popping up. Popping into that left corner or that top right corner. I need to save that though. And then where's our shadow from that, the, the, the teeth shadow? That's one of the biggest elements I wanted to make sure we were trying to include. Also, wait, hang on a second. Let me just make sure we had our prototype image. Did I delete it already? I think I deleted it already. 
because I want to make room. Um, I think this is about what we were thinking, though. Just about. Let's let that moon come into the frame. Where are you at? Okay, it's coming down. Oh, yeah. Just pop into the frame. Yeah. Let's get it between those jaws. Luckily, I'm my focus point is placed in the center of the frame in the distance, so we get a nice, nice in-focus moon, which looks gorgeous. Loving those puffy dust clouds along the bottom. That's great. Not seeing those teeth... Uh, shadow on the floor. Maybe we're not going to get those until it goes down too much. Okay, get that moon in focus. Good atmosphere. That's pretty rad. I do want some more light on the actual dunes in the foreground, though. If possible. And let's do one where we're like really pushed in here and, and have those fangs just chilling. Ooh. I think that's like the last shot we're going to get before it dips below the horizon. So let's just have fun. Maybe we'll try to incorporate some of the, the fairy fountain in there. I, don't, I think that's kind of a mistake. No, it's not, dude. Let's not waste any time doing that. Let's do fangs and the oh, little tip of that one just got me a tail going down. That one's kind of boring. I'll delete that. Okay. Oh, see, there are the fangs. Now they're coming in. Or I guess, oh no, okay, it's when the light switches. I thought that was going to be how the lighting was. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, we'll, we'll grab one of these just after sun uh, or just before sunrise just after the moon has set we'll grab one of these shots too because that has that has that shadow on the floor that i really was hoping we'd incorporate still looks cool with that little last bit of uh or i guess the beginning of the sunrise glow so we'll keep that okay all right you know we got it we got we got a pretty pretty decent a pretty decent attempt on that um and that's about it is this a major test of strength or anything current solution no i'll say like i do a I would do a like a major test of strength or something just to get like another good weapon modest test of strength Whole picture, blessing, power. It's all electrical based puzzles around here, isn't it? Um, let's go do uh, just really quick, just for fun, just for fun. Did we do this one already? If I did this, we've had a blood moon between now and then, so it's fine. Kamakusasa. Let's go to chemical size. I just want to fight. I just want to fight one of these these guys and get some sweet weaponry. Ideally, I would have just like a full set of badass um, ancient weaponry, but it's obviously not the easiest stuff to come by. Although we also haven't gone and purchased any for a while. Um, yeah, let's just do this for shits and giggles, dude. It's almost Halloween, so let's have some fun. Should I try to do it as Dark Link? I will probably die. But you know what? Isn't that the, isn't that why we're here? Where, where the fuck am I going? Where are you? Here, uh, what am I? What am I doing? Not like I can't one shot it with a ancient arrow, but that's fine. That's okay. With the paraglider, you can glide down from high places with ease. Good to know. I'll keep that in my notebook. Yeah, you can skip those little intros, huh? Okay, so let's do this. Let's get... Uh, do we want to try this with Dark Link? <sighs> Three defense. So I'm going to have nine total. 
No, what's the point? Just do ancient. More fitting. Fits the vibe better. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just fuck him up with the Master Sword for a second and then just see if we can use some of these other little guys that saved. I don't remember the last time we saved. I don't think I saved it all yet, actually. Maybe after we did the review, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Rutro. Ooh, give me that giant battle axe, dude. What is the frozen one? No, we want electrical arrows. Um, I guess I'll use the soldier's bow until we. Uh, until we run out of durability. Ooh. Quick one. You're a quick one, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know it's running low on energy. What else is new? Uh, just like get rid of like all this bad weaponry. This is a major test of my strength. Okay, I'll just have you know. Good block, man. Get rid of some silly Moblin arm. Badly damaged already. Hope you like getting... Oh, damn. Hope you like getting crit with a freaking Moblin arm. Did he just dodge that? That was pretty gnarly. Button hooked me. You know, you gotta just enjoy some gameplay every once in a while. Ah! You missed, my friend. Okay, what else do we want to get rid of? I guess the Royal Claymore would be the next worst. Oh no, you didn't. Oh no, we got him. We're gonna take him down before he even, yep. Knew it. Dude, looking at all this awesome weaponry. Do we get a core too? Did I see a core in there? Yeah, dude. Spear and the battle axe and the guardian shield. Let's drop whatever that Lazolfo shield that I'm using. Or no, we'll drop the Boko because two needs that. Dude. Sweet. Better durability. It's got finesse. Okay. Wait, I didn't have another slot. Yeah, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, okay, we had some fun. All right, let's uh, make sure I grab I grab the treasure. Why would I not have grabbed the treasure? It's obvious because you get the treasure marking on there, and you're good. Um, so that's fine. Let's go. We'll just go back up to our travel medallion for a second, which I think I need to go back into my cold, my cold stuff, my cold attire. Don't need money. Don't need fame. Don't need a credit card. But you're really not, you're not gonna be able to buy all that much. My friend. Oh, I guess the temperature is actually okay here for me. Good. Okay, quick review. Let's do our review. 
Uh, so we started. We were gonna the first thing that we really wanted to try to grab was this the great uh, skeleton, but from the opposite side of of what we shot last time, which we shot the moon rising up through its jaws last time. Uh, but that did not provide the best view of a desert, desert landscape below and around the subject. And so from this other side, we actually have a much more desert-like landscape. So that was the biggest thing that I was trying to do. Get onto the other side of that big skeleton, get a good desert landscape behind it, and then we photographed a couple different subjects with that same concept uh, we got electric Lizalfos in front of the sun set going down behind that great skeleton. It's okay. Um, there's either a little bit too much fore, uh, foreground or a little bit too much uh, sky here. And I wanted to hold that shadow. So I'm guessing I probably could have tilted down maybe a little bit on this one. Still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. Wish the sky wasn't quite as blown out. Uh, I think this is the first time we've had any of these uh electrical are they called what are they called electric lazalfos it's usually pretty something simple like that electric lazalfos yes yes indeed very easy i've not shot them doing this little dome electrical attack thing uh and this is actually a pretty good capture of that that attack going on uh i could have tilted up maybe a tiny bit maybe a tiny tiny bit uh, you also have that flying V above head, just above the great skeleton itself, which was again, the subject we were really trying to incorporate into our frame with all these shots. So we got that. That was pretty sweet. Uh, pretty sure it's the first time we've gotten a close, at least a close up of the ice, uh, exploding off of a frozen enemy. And in this case, it worked really well since it was a Stalmoblin with that crescent moon in the background. Although I'm kind of bummed the moon didn't hold focus, but that's okay. It's a decent attempt. I'll probably delete this one. Little bummed that the uh, Moblin's horn popped out of the top of the frame, so that was kind of disappointing. And then the moon being out of focus is like enough to say like, eh, whatever. Um, good pose. That's like a good angle of view on that Moblin, though. Uh, this perspective is very good on the Moblin. And its skeletal structure is, is, is well-formed from this uh, angle. So I like that. Uh, then we got the great uh, skeleton, Gerudo great skeleton with the crescent moon overhead. I do love this shot. Kind of wish there was something else in the sky on that top left side though, because look at the clouds surrounding the moon. Those look great, but imagine that nice dense cloud pattern extending all the way through the sky uh, would have helped out quite a bit. Here, it just kind of sucks. There's only that detail in the cloud cover uh, around the moon, but still kind of cool. Uh, and then we got it as it's going down just below the jaws of the great uh, Gerudo skeleton. Uh, a little bit too much foreground space here, though, I want to say. I could have cropped. like This could be cropped into a uh, panoramic image or a much wider field or uh, uh, aspect ratio. And uh, it would have felt a lot better because the top and the bottom of the frame don't really have much going on. Uh, and then we tried to get a good shot. I think this is, again, our second attempt trying to get a fun shot of uh, the labyrinth, the south Lomai labyrinth. Uh, and in this case, we got it with a cold-footed wolf kind of just chilling, you know, around it. That's kind of fun. I do wish I had the tilt of I tilted up a little bit in the second shot and I, I wanted to see more of that desert landscape in the background, but this pose is a lot better on that a cold footed wolf. So I'm going to we'll talk about that and look at the differences between those next time. Probably going to keep, I'll probably just keep this one. I love his pose better on this shot. And in all honesty, that background landscape is not, that important i guess because there's not all that much happening um i don't know either one both of them feel kind of weird because of uh the way the wolf is standing it just it's very unnatural because they're on that steep incline or decline um either way pretty sweet 
Uh, we got these little ruins. That is the East Barrens ruins. Uh, just below uh, the half moon rise. I should have got this shot at full moon. That's what we should have went back and got. What were we dicking around with during the full moon? Oh, we were dicking around with the uh, with the cactus. That's fine. Anyway, this shot's really sweet. Closest thing to a graveyard, I want to say, we've shot. I think last year we tried to find some gravestone type structures and again i still do not know if there are any graveyards in this game or i cannot remember or think of them uh love the way those ruins look though and the shadows coming down uh in front of them is adds a lot of dimension having them back look like that is adding a lot of depth uh, i do wish that was a full moon or a crescent moon but that's okay and also the silhouette of that, the hills in the background also look pretty cool. So keep that one for now. Uh, we got this little uh, volt fruit cactus in front of those same ruins. Again, wish the moon was kind of in the in the frame uh, better, but really cool looking shadow from the cactus on the ground. Uh, and overall, it feels pretty well balanced to me. So I'll keep that one for now as well. Uh, although a lot of these are probably going to get deleted next time. Uh, you know, it's just not, it's got to have to, it just has to have as much space as we want here. Uh, South low, my labyrinth again, uh, with the moon finally actually involved in, in, in the framing a little bit too much of a struggle to keep those two elements together though. In the frame, unfortunately, they're a little too separated. Um, and not having the moon in focus is always a bummer. So that happened there too. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, this shot's pretty sweet. I love. I do really love a lone cactus in the desert type shot, uh, and especially with that 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 moon rising up. And that was when we were finally at the full moon site. Is that full moon site? It must be the f or no, that wasn't quite full moon. That was our just before the full moon, still oblong. Um. Pretty cool little shot of that cactus, though. The volt, volt fruit cactus. Uh, and then we do have the full moon shot. That shot's actually pretty cool. I do like... I, I like that we at least can feel, even though that the sand dune in the very foreground is in shadow, I like that you still see the wavy structure to it, the wavy pattern uh, going on. That really does help that foreground to have some kind of interest to it. Again, I just wish there was some more detail in the sky. Maybe the stars should be shining through and should look absolutely brilliant and beautiful. I think one of my biggest complaints with the atmospheric conditions at night are that the stars just do not end up showing through as well as I would hope. Uh, when the moon looks that brilliant, you know, you really want those stars surrounding it to look brilliant too. And there's just, they're almost invisible here. And in fact, they're almost invisible in like most of the, the night shots. That's why the clouds being incorporated are very important. Uh, but anyway, still pretty sweet full moon going down, but below those jaws of the great Gerudo skeleton, uh, a little bit lower the horizon on this one. I think I like this one better though, with that beautiful atmosphere coming off the ground, the beautiful plumes of dust coming off the ground. Uh, and I just kind of wish that those distant mountains were actually a little bit more prominent or visible. They're kind of like, they're kind of getting lost back there. Um, and then our last shot with it on the horizon, just about to hit the horizon. Uh, again, we'll do a, like a little comparison between these ones. Pretty sure I'm going to like this one the best, though, when we have all that beautiful uh, dust coming off of sand. But we'll see. We shall see. Uh, and then this is the, the way I wanted that shadow to look on the ground with the teeth clearly visible along uh, that bottom portion of the frame in the shadow uh, but that just didn't work out with the angle of the light when it's setting when the moon's setting behind it unfortunately uh, but you know what we accomplished pretty much what i wanted i mean this this is like the shot that i wanted of this love that love some of these cactus shots i do really like this shot of the uh these little ruins as well okay and so what is the 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 pro snap pick of the day. Uh, 
I also really like this shot, this wide of the entire skeleton with this crescent moon above. I do really like that. Again, it's just that left, top left side of the frame, a little devoid of detail. It's pretty nice to have this wolf in the frame for that low my labyrinth shot. I do really like this shot of the volt fruit cactus with the, the moon rising up in the distance there. That's pretty sweet. Um, but I think this is I think this is my favorite shot. This incorporates pretty much everything we wanted to in this shot. The moon looks great. Uh, the bones look cool. I'm, lo I'm loving that we can still see some of that vertebrae coming down the backside of the skeleton. Maybe a little bit lower contrast than I would want. Maybe the saturation may be a little bit low due to that lower contrast look here. Um, but I'll call it this because this is the kind of the main shot that I wanted to achieve. And we did it. We pretty much did it. Uh, so I'll call that the uh, Pro Snap Pick of the Day. Uh, full moon below the jaws of the Garuda Great Skeleton, as I would probably title it later. Only thing I wish I saw here was the eye socket from um, this angle, because we did see it in these other shots that we shot last week. And I also probably would have been cool to put the moon between the eye socket, but it, that, that feels like, it feels like you can, you can, that you feel the shape of the skull better. I feel like when you can see those eye sockets more than when we can really only see the inside of the mouth. I mean, I guess you see the one on the, I don't know if that's, that's that the eye socket anymore. I don't think that's the eye socket over there. Maybe it is. I guess it just doesn't look like it from this, this side because it looks like the eye socket is the one that's in the very depth of the mouth there. I can't tell if that's it or if that's a different part of the bone. I think it is the eye socket. It's just weird because of the rotation uh, downwards here. You can see the frontal eye socket, but because it doesn't have a clear view into the background, it doesn't stand out quite as much. I think that's the eye socket though there. It just doesn't, again, it doesn't feel right because it's now at the very bottom of the skull. And it looks like it's more inside the mouth than on the side of the head. So, whatever. Anyway, pro snap pick of the day. Uh, this guy, this guy, where, where, where we go? Where we go? This guy. Love it. Love it. Um, and that is about, it's about it here, my friends. Let's save, save our progress. We did our obligatory self-portrait that was like kind of mediocre, but you know, it was, a, it was an obligatory self-portrait and we did it. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got for this evening. Uh, thank you all for coming and hanging out and being part of this. Really appreciate it. Wouldn't be here without all your love and support. So I uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks salt man again for the subscription. Uh, really appreciate it. You're, you're a master you're a master of making me feel uh, worthy and uh, respected and accepted here. So thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing some photography in Fallout 76, of course. Some more, uh, you know, Halloween type stuff. Spooky type vibes. You know, maybe we'll build. I know I, I think I was mentioning building uh, maybe like our, our haunted house camera store type of vibe. Cause I've been meaning to do more of the, uh, our, our photographic store building, our imaging instrument store building, uh, and making that into a little haunted house kind of sounds kind of fun. Maybe not doing an extensive build. We did spend like a really long time last year trying to build a haunted mansion type thing. And I thought it was going to happen so much faster and I should know better than to think that I'm going to do anything fast. Cause I'm, I'm super, I'm like, I, I, I procrastinate and I meander and I, 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 I think about stuff too long and it doesn't, nothing's going to happen fast here. So, uh, we'll build like a very, if we do build, we'll build like a small haunted house camera store structure or whatever and photograph it and then go do some fun stuff in the wasteland. But, um, anyway, that'll be tomorrow at seven 30. Uh, so I hope everybody can make it to that. If not, please enjoy your weekend. Everybody deserves to, uh, have some fun this weekend. It's going to be, uh, the closest weekend to Halloween. So I, I assume, I presume, 
uh, that everybody's going to be out doing their Halloween festivities this weekend. So please be safe. Uh, take care of yourselves and have a lot of fun. That's an order. Uh, and other than that, let's do some socials. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, if you want to watch any of the previous streams, check out YouTube because you can watch all the uh, streams on demand on YouTube uh, whenever you want. Uh, also, we have the short clips from each uh, stream up on there for your uh, bite size viewing pleasure. If you don't have time or you're not into watching full streams, totally understand. You just want to watch the cool photos that we take, the best photos that we've taken, and all those end up on YouTube as well as TikTok. It's the same exact uh, 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 stuff that I'm putting up on both. It's your uh, discretion uh, which one you choose. Uh, also, whenever we're doing these streams, uh, we're building on what we want to say about photography in this game and what we like about what we don't like about it, uh, our thoughts on it in general, and that is going to end up in a nice video, Photography in Zelda Breath of the Wild, which will be on YouTube. So if you want to see... Uh, full breakdown of what we've been doing here in the game that will also end up in YouTube. Because every time, like I said, every time we're doing these streams, I'm deciding uh, what else we can say about shooting in this game, taking notes, getting prepared uh, to do that, to do that final video eventually. Uh, and if that sounds interesting and what we do here in the darkroom sounds interesting, that's, uh, you can keep an eye on the YouTube because that will all end up on there. Uh, what else have we got? about it everything else is pretty self-explanatory got a pretty sweet group of people on discord um and again if if uh, this photographic based content seems to wet your whistle a little bit seems to really hit the spot for you uh everybody on the discord is just as passionate about uh creativity and, and photography and gaming as i am in fact it seems like some people are even more passionate about it because i'm i seem to be not posting as much as some other people on there. So uh, uh, if you have any photos that you've taken, and I always encourage taking some photos in your game of choice or in real life, whatever, uh, and you want to share those with people that love photography and love gaming, uh, post them on the Discord. And that's also how you can keep uh, up to date with the, the goings and comings here in the dark room and what we have planned and what we have coming up next. So uh, check that out. What else have we got? I think that's about it. I don't think I really got anything else. Um, yeah. Again, thank you all for coming and hanging out. really appreciate it. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Like I said, if you do not show up tomorrow, you're dead to me. You know what I mean? Uh, dead meaning like undead and you're hopefully a zombie and you're for Halloween or something. Um, no. If you don't make it tomorrow, obviously it's totally cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's really funny. Uh, thanks, Paxmore. Uh, if you don't, if you don't, uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, just be safe this weekend, please. Be safe for Halloween. Have some fun. Uh, don't do anything too silly. Uh, share your costume. Like I said, I'm I'm McFly from uh, Back to the Future. My girlfriend's gonna be McFly's girlfriend, whose name is not coming to me right this second. But uh, let me know what you guys are being for Halloween. It's gonna have some fun. And uh, other than that, please enjoy the rest of your evening. I love you all. appreciate you all. Thank you all. Uh, take care. Take pictures. Don't lose your dinosaur, uh, even if it's a great Gerudo skeletal dinosaur of types. And uh, I will see everybody uh, tomorrow. Or if not, again, just please, 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 please uh, enjoy your weekend and be safe. Uh, tonight's stream was rated at... I'll do like three Argus and like three Todd Howard. That's how I'm feeling tonight about it. You know what I mean? Thank you. Back to my, thank you. Uh, and then I'll throw a snack out there. Snack ya. Gotcha. Snack ya. Uh, appreciate all the love and support everybody. Peace.